video at the end. What's it going to be like to just have everybody back here? Well, thank God I get to see him a lot because he's around a lot. But, you know, what that night was all about for him and I is convincing him to come here instead of going with the Fab Five just after that and telling him that we're going to win a national championship. And, I mean, I was, you know, a little bit of recruiting lies there because I didn't know what we were going to do. And uh, But I had a dream, he had a dream, and it kind of shows when two people dreaming the same thing and you get a bunch of other people around. And uh, I gave him a little I told you so, and he cried like a baby, but I, I hung in there toughed it out. He's a little softer than I am, I guess. 20 years later, do you believe that worked? The, the recruiting pitch in 95, 25 years now for that. Yeah, it was it was pre-Twitter, so there weren't a lot of other people putting their, their nose in it. But, uh, you know, it was uh, something I'll never forget. And getting those guys back is going to be fun, along with a lot of other players that are coming back. I I hope I hope all of you promote it. It's game day, and, you know, nothing I like better than to... Uh, make this one of the great game days of all time. We've had so many more game days than any other Big Ten school. And one of the reasons is because we've usually had a very good showing, but I wanted to go from good to great, and uh, I'll have those guys around. They're going to have a little brunch before here, and they'll be out there having a good time, and uh, I'm just looking forward to it. With everybody watching, then how much can you emphasize or make it a point of emphasis for your team? You know, you're playing one of the best teams in the Big Ten, not one of the biggest stages as of right now, with the game day being here. How much have you maybe emphasized that with them? Well, we have a meeting after you guys talk to them and they shower and watch a little film. But one of the things I'm going to talk about, you know, is handling the emotions of things. And uh, got experience at it, but that doesn't, but, but each one of them are new at it, you know. And uh, But I'm going to talk about that. You know, I always believe in talking about the white elephant that's in the room instead of hiding behind it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that elephant and, uh, you know, even with the guys coming back and, uh, you know, they're all so excited. Gregory Kelser, when he was here earlier, he didn't walk and he ran into the place. And, you know, and I think that's all what's cool about our place. You know, I'm, I'm sure uh, Mel will be here and uh, new football guys. And, um, you know, hopefully it's a, it's a festive weekend for them. It's a work weekend for me and hopefully for my team and being able to separate the two uh, will tell the maturity level. Uh, you know, I know Cash and X and Arnie will handle it, but I got a lot of guys wearing diapers that might not handle it as well, so we'll have to talk about it. Tom, Tom, Tom like this you is say the morning act dramatically like you do after the game. How much of a lift can I give a team? Well, it gives you a lift. I mean, I mean, practice is really good today. I mean, everybody, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons. You know, you got a lot of things happening this weekend. They're excited about it, too. You know, you got big, big game, as Audrey said, where one of the best teams is is coming here, so that's exciting. And I didn't like winning it by one at the end, uh, but I tell you, we even played well throughout. We made 16 free throws in a row. We guarded well. We didn't defend the, the fouling as much at the end, but uh, it was really good. And, and then to go down at a place like that and come back, that's a little bit about your character, so we're going to try to build on it, but we'd like to get a lead and learn how to uh, make the lead bigger, and that's kind of what the, the goal will be. Tom, if this is, uh, if we're seeing the emergence of Rocket Watts, what will that mean for the rest of the Big Ten and the rest of the season for this team? Well, you know, uh, like always, I'm not going to put as much pressure on as you guys are. He had one great game, but he's played better. You know, he's played better the last five, six games. He's really good defensively. He's starting to figure out transition defense. He struggles a little bit, and he's starting to figure that out. But... I, as I said before, he's been fun to coach. You know, everybody thinks he's going to take every shot and do everything. He likes to pass. He's he's learning what good shots are, um, but he's tough. And, you know, I love tough guys. And he's tough. And he plays hard. Like when I say, "Hey, the rest of you guys, help Rock. He's got the best player." You know, and it's usually, Coach, I don't need any help. You know, well, out of a freshman, you love that. And so, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep building with Rock. Uh, probably a couple more games away from building that statue next to Irvin's, but it's, so let's not put the, uh, you know, the, the carriage before the horse here a little bit, but yeah, what we're looking for is steady improvement, and he's given us some of that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, why should anything else change this year? It's It's been a zoo as far as some of that goes, you know. Uh, 
every game, uh, you know, we might start different guys according to the lineups. We might start different guys. I mean, a lot of teams do it, and a lot of teams don't do it, you know. And I've done it both ways over my career. So, you know, right now, uh, the guy won't start because he scores 20 points. The guy's going to start because he's tough and he plays hard as hell. And uh, if one guy's not playing as hard as the other guy, someone else is going to start. That's the deal we made with them to try to hold this accountability factor that we need to try to get a little more consistent. But, you know, it's been a good week and a half for us here. And, uh, you know, from Sunday uh, till now, from a week ago Sunday, we're, we're starting to do some things a little bit better. And yet, uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, Maryland uh, presents a unique challenge for you. Can you just talk about, you know, with their point? Yeah, they got the man. Smith kid inside who shooting threes. He's the best three-point shooter by far. He's shooting almost 50%. And then I guess you got Colin, who's been a great player here and a four-year guy. He knows what he's doing. You know, another great matchup for uh, for, for our guy, Cassius. And, uh, and then they got it. The rest of their team's kind of like uh, Illinois. You know, they're a little smaller, all 6'4", 6'5", very athletic. A lot of guys that can get to the rack, a lot of guys that can shoot the ball. Sometimes they're not shooting great, but it'll be uh, you know our best against their best as far as uh, Xavier against Smith and Cassius against Cowan. And let the fun begin. Is this, a, is this a matchup you think works for Marcus, similar to how Illinois was or somebody else? That's it's completely story. different than Illinois because uh, Smith is all over the floor. He's, a, he's at the three-point line more than he's at the two-point line. So it might work out for Marky. We might need people that can cover more in the perimeter. You know? We'll see. But, uh, you know, we still got another day to watch film, make some decisions, and it uh, be a fun night. And How did you go against your philosophy at all? I mean, kind of having a line of the change game by game. I mean, something you need to like Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little, but, but what hasn't been against my philosophy this year? You know, everything. Everything's changed this year, you know, with injuries, with situations. So it's not your normal year. And uh, as they say, a lot of ways to skin a cat, you know. And uh, we've had different lineups. Uh, you know, Kyle Arns, if he keeps me able to practice every day, who knows, maybe he'll get back in there. Is that keeping guys sharp, though, keeping on their toes to try and get back in there, knowing it's fluid? Well, we just started doing this a little more, so... The reason is because we didn't think guys were sharp. We didn't think they were playing uh, as focused as they need to be. So sometimes uh, you can yell, you can hug, you can kiss, you can scold. From the uh, beginning of time, back with the chariot, people fought each other. You know, sitting somebody sometimes helps more than anything. So we'll see. I know you uh, said you were, you're up by 20 and you want to win by 20. Uh, by 20, I went in by 30. Well, right, but <laughs> considering that, you know, some of those road games you had come back and then just didn't make those plays yeah. late, is, is there a, even more of a benefit, especially some of these younger guys, that you were able to make some plays late? And it's a good point, and, and I think you're right, and, and the hard part is the more and more and more we practice, and now that we're more and more aware of those three sophomores and three freshmen, the more respect I have for Calipari, you know, I just keep saying it because... They just don't understand what level you have to play at against good people. And uh, the focus goes a little bit, but it does. You know, I'm watching film now, and I'm looking at everybody else's freshmen and sophomores. The problem is most of the good teams aren't playing many of them. But it's the same all over, you know. We just, I, I'll go with I've been going with for a month now. Let's be different. Let's not give in to the same. Easier said than done. That's the goal. Attitude-wise, what do you think your guys got out of Illinois? I mean, going in, especially after Michigan, you know, they talked about a swagger and getting the attitude back and toughness. Toughness, attitude is, is a big key. And, uh, why that was ever lost, I don't know. But maybe some of the young guys, maybe some of the things we've been through, I don't know. But I would agree with you that that was missing. And, and I, I'd say that the biggest difference is a couple of the upperclassmen realize it, and the coach. The coach didn't do a very good job, you know. My style, I'm going to be on people. And I've let everybody in America convince me differently until the other night. And uh, so hang on. That's all I can tell you, hang on. Rocket's got some alpha dog in him. You're exactly right. Uh, 
I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of one of those things where cash is right now. You kind of need someone maybe sometimes to just take that man. Yeah, you do. You need a you need a guy that has uh, that fears nothing. You know, unfortunately, that includes me sometimes. I don't know if Rock fears anything, but and that's why I pushed him a little harder the other night. And uh, it's I love my team. Oh, he was great. He was great. He, you know what? That kid has been so much different. I won't say that you guys thought than I thought. Me personally. I can't blame anybody else, you know. I, I figured when he went through with different schools and that, but he's got a something about him that he, uh, he competes. He's a competitive, tough kid. And he's way more of a respectful kid than you would guess. He just, uh, I don't know why I say that, but you know, you know me, I always like guys that argue. Because then I know how much they care. It's the guys that don't argue. I never know how much they care. So, for Rock and I, it's it's been a good, uh, it's been good, you know, and he's going to do some things wrong, and I'm going to tell him, and he's going to get mad about some things, but it's really, really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. And uh, having Mateen and Mo Beat, JR and those guys back, I, I think I'll be laughing, because no matter what Rock it gets, that's like a church choir compared to what those guys got. So he seems like one of those guys that would have fit with that. Guy. Oh God, yeah. he'd have been fist fighting with El El Anaganya. <laughs> Tom, so I'm sorry, good. Good. I don't know if you know the answer. I'm just curious about how the, the retro jerseys came about. Because that was a Reebok jersey when you wore them. Now they're Nike, and the design is back. I don't, I don't, it might not even have anything to do with you. I'm just curious how that came yeah, about. Yeah, I, I sold them. You what? Oh, you saw them? Okay. Well, that works. <laughs> we, we, we asked for a retro, shot. and Nike was good enough to do the retro. Okay. And uh, so that's kind of how it came about. But Pruder's the guy in charge of that. I don't, you know, I have enough trouble coaching this team. I let Pruder do the uh, designs. Do you like that look? You know, does that, I know it obviously has memories. Do you have any thoughts on the jersey itself or anything? A lot of people are excited. That's you, you know what's funny is, I just, I just felt like every jersey we've worn. I don't know why, you know, some people the black and the lime, whatever, uh, fluorescent. Uh, some people didn't like the gray because we lost the game. And there's no superstitious, you know. Same socks, no. Same underwear, no. Same tie, no. I, I win a game, I don't wear the same one the next week. Um, I'm not superstitious, I'm just grinding. Just working. Yeah, it's working. Every Thanks, special season has a, a, a win that, or a moment that defines it. Maybe a, a, a stake in the sand. When I was watching that Illinois game in Illinois this week, and they came back from 20, I turned to someone and said, if they come back and win it, this will be the moment in the sand where this season turned. Did you sense that? I do agree with you 200% that, you know, there comes a time each season where that team can't be Mateen's team, it can't be Denzel's team, it can't be, you know, uh, Miles' team, uh, it can't be Cash's team last year, because every year you have a new cast of characters, and I think it's very important that each team uh, kind of uh, develops their own identity, and uh, to do that, I think you've got to go through the ringers on something. You usually don't do that by winning, just winning. You do that by controversy. You do that by adversity. And uh, yeah, I did think a little bit of that. Now I'll say that, you know, we'll play bad on Saturday, but I doubt it. I, I, I think they understand it. Now playing good might not be good enough. The team's good, really good. But if we play good, really good, and we play hard, I like our chances against anybody. Rocket said it was a learning how to win moment. And you have often said the hardest part about a young player is teaching them how to win. Yeah, yeah, how to win the right way. You know, you can win a game, but, you, but, but, but what they do is they play so many games in that AEU stuff where you win a game, it matters. You lose a game, it doesn't matter. You know, you got to understand when you win a game, it matters, and when you lose a game, it matters. And so I think that's maybe what he meant, and I think, uh, you know, but Cash is, is getting better, too. You know, I mean, you and I have talked about it. There's been some tough times, and it's still going to end up some tough times, but I think he's learning how to manage things and deal with things. And it's been fun. I've, I've spent a lot more time, and I already spent a lot 
but it's it's been good. It's been good. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. To have college game day and the reunion this weekend is just kind of just cap it all off for you. Yeah, you know, what else can we have? You know, uh, well, it should be my birthday this weekend or something. My, my anniversary, something. You know. But that's a lot of stuff on the plate, and uh, we just got to focus in and say to ourselves, um, focus in on the game and try to celebrate all the activities after the game. And that's kind of the approach we're taking. But uh, I'm thrilled to have game day here, and I'm thrilled to have a very good Maryland team, really well coached. It'll be a fun time. Thanks, Coach.